Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If this is your first time here and you enjoy what you are hearing, please show that subscribe button some love and remember to set your notifications to all. That way you don't miss any stories that I upload. If you would like to learn how to become a member of Back to Ashes or buy me a coffee, that information is down below. Please stay tuned and keep your eye on the community tab as an announcement will be coming. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Neighbors from Hell. Right after this intro and ad will play, I'll read the first story and ad will play, and after that there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is meant for educational and entertainment purposes. My wife and I moved into a home. We are first time home buyers on a busy street. And there is a single guy who lives across the street from us who is about our age, 30 to 40 age range. After about a year of living here, he left a note on our door saying he would mow our lawn for $20 and leaving his phone number. We thought this was great because we wanted to befriend him anyways. We had been mowing our own lawn for a year and a half, but this was the first time of this spring that it needed it, so I paid him $40 to do it. We had a long talk and he seemed like a nice guy. He said he had some problems with Oxy in the past and he is currently unemployed but he is working on that and likes to do lawn jobs. He proceeds to bring a ladder over and says he can manually clean our gutter for $460. No pressure washer. We say we will think about it as he still has our lawnmower. He said he was cleaning the blades out so that next time he mows our grass, it will be easier for him. Well, a week goes by and he will not give us our lawnmower back. I regretted letting him take it across the street and thought it was gone. He finally texts and says he will give it back to us for a blade cleaning fee of $10. We go to the ATM to get the money and when we come back, our mower was by our fence where anyone could have taken it. Texted him that we have the money now if he wants it. We had decided to do our own lawn like we were doing before. Now our neighbor is mad because we found someone less expensive to clean our gutters out. He saw another man on the roof doing our gutters and texted us saying, I see you are using someone else. Thanks for the heads up. We tried to explain to him that this guy is family and doing it for free. I'm afraid he will retaliate somehow, but we do have security cameras. I'm mostly writing all of this down to help me keep the timeline clear in my mind for when I testify, and I really need to vent. My husband and I live in a four unit, one floor apartment building in our complex. We live at the very back of a quiet cul-de-sac, and while it's a bit of a dump, it's right by the woods, a creek, and it's mostly peaceful. We live there since 2006 and have seen lots of neighbors come and go. Most have been fine. But the neighbor right next to us since around 2017 or so has become quite of a nightmare and after a recent management change, our complaints are finally being heard. The PM is attempting to evict him for harassment, generally being a nuisance and breaking his lease by interfering with our peaceful enjoyment of the property. I always had a bad, creepy vibes about that man and never spoke to him. My husband is more friendly and willing to give people the benefit of the doubt, so he would say hi, comment briefly on sports, etc. The way our apartments are situated, we have to walk by his door to get to our unit, unless we went to walk around the back of the building through the woods. I would just mind my own business and ignore him. Gray rock all the way. For the past couple of years, he has decided that he is entitled to my attention and comes outside exactly when I get home from work, rushes out the door, trying to say hi to me or just staring. He knows when we get home and he has a little cut out portion of his window blinds facing the parking lot so he can spy. 
He works, but only sporadically, maybe contract or temp work. Most of the time, he's home getting drunk. He has made comments on my body, my weight. Wolf whistles extremely loudly only when I pass the window, suggestively asking me if I'm wet. It was pouring rain and I was carrying groceries, and it was the only time I ever responded saying loudly, What the fuck? He came to our door once in a drunken stupor, making weird accusations about us locking our car doors too loudly and hating our patio. I literally can't do anything with the patio because he's always there staring or sitting right next to the sidewalk with his shirt off. We ended up getting a door camera and luckily he never came to the door again. We have tried every method of avoiding and ignoring him. We go in at a different time in case he's just trying to get a rise out of my husband. I'll have my phone with me making fake phone calls. He randomly pounds on his walls in the middle of the night. It sounds like he's hammering or throwing a bowling ball. I've been able to record the vibrations off of our walls a couple of times, but it's not constant, so it's hard to anticipate. The final straw was March 28th, when he saw, from his little spy window, my husband and I talking briefly to our neighbor, who is African American. We are white. He rushed outside as we walked by, accusing me of giving him dirty looks. I think he just hated seeing me speaking to a black man, but not him. He is 100% that kind of person. It's absurd because I don't make eye contact with him. I make a point to not look at him. And how would he see all of these supposed dirty looks if he wasn't always out there staring at me? And if he hates the way I look so much, why doesn't he just, you know, stop looking at me? We again ignored him and I texted the new PM about it, who dislikes him as much as we do. He calls them drunk all the time and is generally verbally abusive to staff. The maintenance guy loathes him. He literally has no friends or family or anyone that likes him or visits. A couple of girls moved out from the building in the past couple years because he was always staring at them and making suggestive comments. Anyway, the next day I decided to put an app on my phone that records audio thinking if I can get some more evidence, it might help our case. So, as soon as I got home from work, he rushes out and accosts us again, asking why I'm giving him dirty looks. I am a non-confrontational person and hate conflict, but I went ahead and straight up verbalized everything he had been doing wrong and made it very clear his attention was unwanted and... We wanted him to leave us alone. I told him he was a sexist pig who harassed me constantly, and his defense was that he's got girls everywhere. Not exactly what I meant, but whatever. He kept calling me trash and garbage based on the area of our town he thought I was from, further cementing his bigot status. He said he never spoke to me, ever and I told him that maybe he didn't remember because he was drunk. He slurred. I don't even drink. He said that my whistling wasn't at my fucking ugly fat ass, but because he was gambling on sports and whistles when, slurring again, he's winning. I literally laughed at him because he was so cliche. The girl you won't leave alone is suddenly a fat bitch when you don't get what you want from them. He said he's been recording me and had me on camera giving him dirty looks. I just kept repeating, leave us alone. It's not that hard. I want you to stop staring at me. Stop ambushing us every time we come home. Sent the audio to the PM and also realized the door camera recorded most of it too. She sent him a 30 days notice to vacate after she had given him a warning letter in January. He is so entitled he got a shady lawyer to call and threaten to sue them for age discrimination. He's like middle-aged. But when he mailed his rent check with a crumpled piece of paper saying, I just want to work things out and stay as a tenant at Redacted. If not, let me know. 
She mailed it back with the three-day notice, and he is not gone yet. So today, the lawyer is filing the eviction lawsuit with the court, and I'm guessing at some point this month, we will have to testify against him. I think he literally thought it would just go away and they'd forget. We've been walking around the back of the building for the past month just to save our sanity, which I hope shows even more that we've been trying to avoid and de-escalate and are the reasonable party. And it's not right that he gets to just live his best drunk life while I can't even sit on our porch. I do think the PM has been acting in good faith and is doing her best. She's been as transparent, helpful, and empathetic as possible. I don't think she'd file it if she didn't think it was worth it. The old PN basically told us, boo-hoo, too bad, boys will be boys. I just hope their lawyer is good and can convince the judge to approve the eviction. English is not my native language, so I'm sorry for any grammatical mistakes which will occur since I'm still a mess inside my head. A friend who is also a neighbor and I have really grown tired of our refugee neighbors. We live in study apartments. The municipality has placed a family of four here and children are normally not allowed to live here. But the children of the refugees are an obvious exception. For almost a year, as long as they have lived here, they have been nothing but noisy and messy, and we, my friend, my direct neighbor, and I, have never had any evidence. But recently, they have been filling up our common areas with junk they find. The dad does. The mom has a temper and sometimes smashes things, like glass ashtrays in the direction of my cat Katie. They have been banned from the local pub where I work as a volunteer from time to time. Yesterday, my friend and I went to talk to the admissions office and told us to write an email with pictures, which we have taken the last few weeks. So I wrote the email and made sure that my friend had approved it. I didn't think that they did anything about it this soon, but they did, to my surprise. One of the common areas that affect me the most is the shed meant for bicycles. That's my main way to get around, and it has been really freaking hard to get around the shed. They had so much junk, multiple bicycles for grown-ups. There are only two grown-ups in that household. Multiple microwaves, a mini oven, clothes hamper, etc. Things that doesn't belong in a shed that's meant for bicycles. We also have a small shed and shared depot area where the relay is, and that needs to be accessible but they have filled that space with junk as well. How do we know it's theirs? We have seen the dad bring in the junk home on many occasions. Now, to the event that happened today. I came home after some errands in the centrum of the city I live in, and of course I took the bike. Everything was fine. Birds were singing, flowers were blooming, days like these that are the best days to be happy no anxiety, and I actually thought about that exactly. That lasted until I reached my block, more specifically, the shed. The mom and the dad were gathered in the front of the shed, frantically talking in their native language on the phone. I went in and saw that my usual space for my bike was gone. There was no space for it. Their junk was gone too. The dad, who was the, who has the habit to be way too close, cornered me in there. I was stressed out and his presence and him talking to me in his language did not make it any better. I tried to tell them that I need some space to think. I did that multiple times. Of course, they didn't listen. They put the other end on speaker and the person began talking to me. I had gotten a major panic attack at that point, so I don't remember anything clearly, even though it was just one hour ago. But what I did hear and remember was that they knew I was the one sending the mail. I was shaking, hyperventilating, and just wanted to be alone so I could kiss my kitty. How do you get rid of people? By acting crazy? Is it acting when you are a bit crazy? 
So I just yelled really loud. I'm having a panic attack. I'm having a panic attack. Please get out. I hate making a scene, especially yelling in public, but I just had enough. For info, I have multiple disorders, Asperger's syndrome, social anxiety, and GED. And the worst thing someone can do is to drive me to a corner and block the exit, which the dad did. They know I have these disorders. I'm so disappointed that the administration and the municipality told them it was me who wrote that email because I do believe that they are bound by law not to disclose stuff like this in case of retaliation like what happened today. I have written another email to the administration before I begin to write this. Thank you for listening to my story if you've made it this far. Before I begin the story, I would just like to say, there is nothing in the world that I hate more than a racist. Here we go. As the flayer says, I live in an apartment. The layout of the particular building I live in is essentially a two by two square. Two apartments on the bottom and then two more on top of those. Across from these apartments is a small hallway, a set of stairs to get to the upper floor and then the same two by two layout. The hallway is maybe six or seven feet wide, so every door is facing another door. Eight apartments total, pretty tightly packed. It's important to the story. So about three or four months ago, we got some new people. Within this two by two, Gris, my apartment is in the top right section. These new neighbors move into the same grid as me on the bottom left. Within the first week that they are here, they play loud ass music. Some of my other neighbors have played loud music, but it's always been unable to be heard when our doors close. The neighbor's music could be heard while I was in my bedroom on a Saturday morning at 9 a.m. In my complex, there's always the option to cry to management about neighbors not following rules or just being assholes like this. But I don't like to do that because I want to be polite and actually have a neighborly conversation instead of crying to mommy management so I have never reported anyone. I decide to go downstairs and knock on their door. I swear this is important to the story. A black woman answers the door. I am a white man. I then ask, Hey, would you guys mind turning the music down just a little? I can hear it really loud inside of my bedroom. She nods and I say, Thank you. I appreciate it. I start walking up the stairs and a different black woman comes out and says, Hey, where do you live? In an angry tone, I say, Right there in this apartment number redacted. She looks pissed and says okay and goes back inside. They turn it down and I think about how weird of an interaction that was, but it turned out to be okay. They have continued to play music loudly at inconvenient times and have also got a new yappy dog that they leave out on their porch that constantly barks for multiple hours at a time. Not very considerate neighbors, but I have not reported them. I don't know why, but I haven't in all of this time. I proceeded not to interact with these people for the next three or four months through all of their shit until yesterday. I am walking down the hallway and I almost get to the stairs, loading up to the second floor, when the second woman pulled up in her car and opened the door and yelled for me, saying, I've been looking for you for the past two weeks. And I'm like, me? She says, yes, you. You keep reporting me for our music and our dog like an asshole. I know my rights and I know I can play my music if I want to between X AM and X PM. Next time I get a complaint, I'm calling the police on you. This is incredibly jarring to me. I told them, no, it wasn't me who reported you. And she says, you're the only one who's had a problem with my music. You're the only one to come to my door. I asked everyone else in here and they said they didn't do it. I am desperately trying to tell them that I have not done any such thing and that I came to their door because... I don't like crying to management, but she keeps interrupting me and yelling at me. I'm keeping a quiet and calm demeanor this entire time. She then goes on. 
I know you're the one doing it because we're black. Tasha, a different black resident that lives directly across from me, has also been getting a bunch of reports from you. You don't report them or them or them while she's pointing at all the doors. This was very shocking and I tried to plea with her, but she wouldn't hear me out at all. She's convinced I'm an evil racist man. Again, this is the second time I have ever interacted with this woman. Now I have no idea why Tasha is getting reported. I haven't had any issues with her at all, but I certainly understand why this resident who is screaming at me is getting reported. That being said, I have not reported any residents in my entire time here, and now this woman has convinced herself and the people who live across from me that I'm a racist and unjustifiably reporting them because of it. Now, honestly, I was hurt by this initially because it was very shocking and I am not a racist, but now I don't care what she thinks of me, if it makes her sleep better at night. I just don't want her to retaliate against us unfairly. She's clearly not afraid to confront and scream at anyone who is essentially a complete stranger, who isn't even doing what they're being accused of in the first place. So it makes me afraid that they'll try to pull something or take it out on us further. Like I said, she said she'd do something if she got another report complaint but I can't control that because I am not the one reporting them. Evidently, someone else is hearing the music and reporting. If I can hear it when I am up and diagonally from them, then the two apartments directly above and to the right of them hear it louder. Does anyone have any idea how to handle this situation? Anyone else been in a similar situation? Please, I need the help. Oh boy, do I need to vent about my neighbors badly. So, I've lived in my apartment with my fiance about six years now. It's badly run down, but until recently was the cheapest in the area. $300 rent increased, hell yeah. We live on the top floor of our building that we mostly share with retirees that are sweet or mind their own business. A couple about our age moved in across the hall with their four kids and one was still in the oven. When they first arrived, my boyfriend gave them a friendly greeting and they ignored him. No worries, we aren't super chatty either. Eventually, the dad's two kids stopped visiting. One day I ran into the dad in the hall and he said, you don't have to call the police on me. You can just come and knock if we're too loud. It was super awkward because I hadn't called them or even noticed any noise from them at all yet. I just tried to laugh it off and tell him I don't care about that staff, but he clearly did not believe me and I was uncomfortable. He tried talking to my fiance and I a few more times, but nothing too unusual. Fast forward to like a week before Thanksgiving and they are having a wicked bad fight, yelling, banging noise, and they were going in and out of the apartment. Someone else called the cops. I think it was actually the woman herself and he went to jail. Yay, right? Uh, no. Within the week, he was back. How do I know this? Because he was screaming at her, hurting her, and one of the kids, running outside and punching people's cars. So I called the cops this time because I actually heard him say he had hit someone, and it was just really, really bad. When the police came, they were still arguing in the hall, and he ran from them, and they tackled him outside. I'm not sure if they tased him, beat him up a bit, or it was just like the fact he was on drugs, but he was on the ground screaming and crying for his mommy. And I do mean that, actually. He was in jail for a while after that one, but not long enough. We heard the police say he was not allowed back here. When he came back there, there was more fighting, but none that sounded physically violent. I started getting really sick of it and complained to our office once. Afterward, we got two notices for noise complaints against us, threatening eviction. We went to the office proving it couldn't have been us, and it was dismissed. 
Sometime in between there, they had their baby. Like one month after the baby was born, they had the worst fight yet. She ran out into the hall screaming, please help, he's hurting me and my son, to call the cops. And she was telling them she needed to go to the hospital and needed stitches. Holy shit. I called the cops immediately. The boyfriend got her to come inside and be quiet while the police knocked for about 20 minutes before giving up and leaving. Their car was there the whole night. They never left. I called CPS, tried a domestic violence hotline, called the office, and even reached out to a mutual friend who had the woman's family check on her and the kids. The next day, the man tried to talk to us in the hall. My boyfriend answered him, but was very short with him. This was the beginning of last month. Since then, I imagine all of the processes put in motion have affected them in some way. Somehow, they know it was me, and they were pissed. I expected it from him, but it surprised me when she started yelling at me in the hall. She begged for help. I called, and she's mad at me? Again, I called and emailed the police, this time with photos of my calls recorded, his public arrest records, and a few other things. They also answer when my fiancé calls, so I heard nothing. I decided that if I have to live across from these chaotic and violent people who are going to continue to accost me in our shared living space, I should get a ring doorbell. I put it up last night. They didn't notice it all day and fought in front of it. I sent the office a video and they put a notice on their door. I don't know what specifically. The woman turned to tell her man it was us and realized the camera and they threw a tantrum and called me a fat bitch, amongst other things. The man has been running inside and outside for a few hours now. I don't know what's up with that. They've literally been in and out over 40 times in the last 12 hours. My fiancé finally got the office to speak to us and said a process with the police is in place, though they can't say what exactly. I feel super uncomfortable in my own home. I don't want to go out there and deal with these people. I don't really know what else can be done at this point. But if you all have any ideas, I'm open to taking them. If you took the time to listen to my story, thank you. Wish me luck dealing with these unstable people. Aggressively unfriendly is how I would describe them. It's a duplex with paper-thin walls. You can hear every word. I'd say morning or high in passing and be met with a mean mug in silence or a slack-jawed stare or a, oh, she it. I'm a quiet, considerate neighbor, and they are the opposite. Obnoxious, slamming doors all day, and night, they are so loud that the whole building shakes. Waking us up multiple times a night, also having their teen kids screaming like a banshee all night long. Then loudly talking obsessively about me all day and all night. They count my liquor cans and my garbage and gossip shit about me all day long. The fact that I cook dinner and they exist off takeout, does that make them extremely jealous? They have a drug addict son and neck tattooed randos coming and going at all times. I awake to them talking about me. I go to sleep about them talking about me. Get a life. I do nothing but be Ned Flanders as a neighbor. They didn't get along with their previous neighbors. Apparently, I'm a C word I can't say on here for existing and paying my rent. Apparently, the backyard is theirs as they ask me for a dog that they didn't know what breed it was. It's a mix with their incredibly bitchy teen daughter. Can you guess what breed of dog it was? And that they didn't know jack shit about training dogs, and it never is on a leash or supervised? Yes, of course, a pit bull. They have different neck-tattooed unemployed men coming and going who talk about my 41-year-old fuckability and plot how to fuck me. And I can hear them as if it as if I'd be interested in 20-year-olds. 
and somehow these trashy white people ruining the property are convinced that they are better than me. I've never encountered such shitty people in my life, and I have lived in very poor white neighborhoods before, and when I give up being friendly to them, they attempt to be friendly to me. They never leave their house, they have no life, and are obsessed with talking shit about me that I can hear. All day long, they litter all over the yard. Of course, the pit bull shits all over the yard too. They don't clean it up, and then they say, he's friendly, when he's clearly not, and growls and barks at me and my young child. Off a leash, of course. No owners in sight, of course. The thing even busted into my apartment behind me unexpectedly, and I had to persuade it out. Totally not cool of me to babysit an eight-week-old puppy either. That makes the man scream. She's got a dog now. Effing C-word I can't say here. And his pick-me, desperate blonde girlfriend gets yelled at because he wants a BJ. Hint, hint. All while my young kid has to listen to this trash. Yet that blonde thinks she's got a real catch for a man. Jesus Christ. And they are convinced that they are above me. Despite the cops showing up looking for their kid and me telling them I didn't see him, then minding my own damn business and keeping that to myself. But apparently, my business of their utmost concern and also to try to tell anyone who will listen about it. It's pretty boring stuff. And trying to tell anyone who will listen that I'm a horrible person, not them. So, moving forward, I really do hope that we as a complex, or just me, can get these people kicked out and return to the peace we knew before they moved in. I moved into a house by myself about five years ago, and mostly kept to myself. However, there was a dying tree on the property line between me and my neighbor's house that I wanted to get removed because it would drop branches on my roof whenever there was a decent wind and was threatening to fall over completely onto my house. So this required me to get in contact with those neighbors to inform them of my intention to get the tree removed and ask for their permission since the crew would need to be in their yard as well. I only spoke to the wife at this time, and she's decent and still is. The husband is more reclusive, and I'd only seen him around, but never really spoke to him. The wife and I exchanged phone numbers so I could keep her informed on when the tree crew was coming. Fast forward like six months later, after the tree was long gone. I get a text from an unknown number that's just a smiley face. I delete it, assuming it's some spam call. But then the next day, I get another text from that number. That's just my name. Now I start to panic. I respond, asking who this was, and the response was just another smiley face. Yeah, creeped out even harder. Finally, they texted they were neighbor's husband. Okay, but he wasn't the one I gave my number to, so she had it without permission. I asked him what he wanted, and he started trying to chat me up like we were old friends. This was the first time I had ever communicated with him. I told him I didn't want to talk to him, and that he didn't have my permission to have my phone number. He was silent for a month or so, but then started texting me again, just to chat. I again told him to leave me alone and to stop texting me. The texting did eventually stop for about a year so I thought he'd finally given up. But then, last year, he started leaving gifts on my porch. Mostly just random sticks, but arranged in a way that were very obviously placed there, like he was some squirrel making a summoning circle. He's learned my work schedule, and I don't think he works or even drives for that fact, since he's home all day, every day. And he leaves his gifts when he knows I'll be at work and therefore can't confront him about it without going over to his house, which I absolutely do not want to do. I set up a camera after the first few times because I deeply suspected it was him, but just wanted photographic proof. 
Now that it's spring, the gifts this year have evolved into flower cuttings from his lawn, which he otherwise does not maintain, and it's become a fire hazard. Again, he leaves them while I'm at work, so I don't have the opportunity to tell him to stop without initiating a conversation myself, and I absolutely know he will interpret me. Initiating contact is proof that I want a relationship with him, regardless of what I say. So, he so far hasn't done anything aggressive or destructive or outworldly threatening, but he has pushed and ignored boundaries that have been repeatedly set since day one. He says he's doing it for me because he wants to be my friend but is completely deaf to my actual wishes and continues to just do whatever makes him feel like he's winning me over. He and his wife seem to have had a bad falling out within the past few years, since I never see them doing anything together anymore, and they're always out and about separately. I think they just continue to share the house for financial reasons and keep separate. So if she doesn't want anything to do with him anymore, either. I'm hesitant to reach out to her about it because I don't want to force them to be her problem again if she's already cut herself off from him, but is forced to share a living space. The good news is that I think their house is under foreclosure and they'll be moving out within the next couple of months. I feel bad for the wife and her daughter since they're fine, but if it means I'll be rid of that creepy stalker of a neighbor, I'll take it. I just hope he doesn't become increasingly desperate for someone to take him in the closer it gets to moving day. I am moving out of here at the end of May, partially because of this situation. Landlord and roommate, let's call her Wilma has gotten completely enmeshed in my neighbor's, let's call her Betty's, drama. Betty comes over on a daily basis, begging for money and food, and Wilma always gives it to her. When I moved in two years ago, Wilma failed to even mention Betty to me. Betty had a key to the house and spent most of her time here while Wilma was at work during the day. When I moved in, Wilma took Betty's key and gave it to me. For the first year I lived here, I was gone about 80% of the time, and whenever I was here, Betty was always badgering me, asking me when I was going to leave. I suspect Wilma tried to use me as a buffer by telling Betty she had to take the key now because I need the key. Wilma does not have the courage to set any boundaries at all with Betty. Betty lives in a home that should be condemned. It's owned by a famous local slumlord. It's dangerous and shouldn't be inhabited. The best thing Wilma could do is report it to the housing authority and help Betty get on a waiting list for some kind of facility for old people. Betty did work all of her life and has social security. Wilma is unwilling to do this, claiming Betty won't do it. I've told her to tell her she has to do this or she won't help her anymore. Wilma still does nothing but enable her. She is not really helping. Betty has a son and a daughter in their 50s who are both felons. They live with her. At one point, Wilma convinced Betty to put a restraining order against her daughter, but of course, this did not work. I think emotionally, Wilma needs Betty more than Betty needs Wilma. Wilma allows Betty to keep a bank and credit card stashed in her freezer in case of an emergency. Betty has an emergency at least once a week. It usually involves her children needing money from her, which they are always stealing from her to begin with. And that is why she hides her cards here. Her stuff also consists of a bank and credit card, an EBT card, and a bunch of personal paperwork with her social security number on it, and her name that Wilma is always helping her with. Wilma drives her to the doctor, grocery store, cable and phone company, etc. Thursday, Wilma's mom suddenly died. So Wilma is 3,000 miles away for at least the next week. This really pisses off Betty. I have the porch door open and she starts pounding on it, telling me she has to come into the house to get her credit cards. And she told me she needed to put something else in the freezer. 
I told her to take all of her belongings because she was not to come back here again until Wilma comes home. She still left some stuff here, which I had left on the front porch. There is no lock on the porch door, but a lock on the main one. So she makes it a habit of walking onto the porch and banging on the door endlessly, at all hours of the day and at all hours of the night. I ignore her banging. Usually Wilma is here to deal with that. The first thing she asks me, is Wilma's mom dead yet? The last time Wilma talked to Betty, she told her her mom is dying, and I don't want to talk to you right now, and hung up on her. Betty responded to this by coming over and pounding on the door all night long. I left the house, and Wilma later told me that she saw her in the yard, and again told her to leave her alone. So anyway, I tell Betty, yes, Wilma's mom has passed. Betty immediately responds by telling me what she needs and how aggravated she is that Wilma won't answer her phone right now. I'm considering putting her stuff in a bag with her name on it and hanging it on the outside of the porch door, and then moving a bench and some books in front of the porch door to block it so she cannot come in, but she probably will just break through the screen. There's been moments where I went out the side door and told her if she was having an emergency to call 911, but she needed to stop banging on the door because Wilma was not home or Wilma was asleep. She always refuses if she knows Wilma's home because she knows Wilma will eventually get out of the bed and give her whatever she wants. Is there someone I can call other than 911 to report her trespassing? I want to put up an electric fence, but I don't even think that will stop her. I'm only here for another five weeks, but I'm not sure when Wilma is going to come back. And I have to admit, I have a pretty bad temper when I'm pushed far enough. Well, hello all. Neighbor upstairs walks around barefooted. Kindly asked her whether she could wear slippers some weeks ago, and she apologized and said she would be careful. Unfortunately, the footstep sounds have continued since then. Today I went upstairs again, but this time when I rang her doorbell, she called the landlord. I could hear her. The landlord immediately came over in half a minute and told me that he would handle it. So I went back to my room and soon after he visited me. He basically told me that she doesn't have to wear slippers. Told him that it's disturbing to hear footsteps all the time, even when I'm trying to sleep. Was told that I shouldn't be sensitive and that this is a shared apartment. So such noises are normal. Was I being unreasonable by asking the person upstairs about wearing slippers to reduce the footstep sounds? I am more saddened by my landlord than the person above, though. The landlord's tone, body language, and sarcastic laughs are condescending, to say the least, as if my question was so stupid when it comes to reparations. He's a reliable person, but when it comes to issues with other tenants, he is really dropping the ball, in my opinion. One year ago, there was a male tenant next to me who would hammer for 30 to 45 minutes non-stop, every day around 8 to 10 p.m. for four to five weeks, despite the contract saying that we, the tenants, are not allowed to do home reparations ourselves. Sent my landlord repeated messages, and he would write that he would solve it eventually, but the hammering never stopped until the tenant moved out. It would have taken the landlord only half a minute to come over. Anyway, at this time, I was also told by the landlord that it is normal, because this is a shared apartment. Really? So, everything goes? Well, I have come to a point where I feel that being kind and considerate are not important in this apartment, and you only end up being on the receiving end if you try to do something. After seeing my landlord's behavior, I will definitely move out when my contract ends this summer because I don't want to give my money to such a person. Just the thought alone gives me anxiety, but I am afraid that I cannot do anything else but to retaliate because I'm so sick and fed up of 
always being patient. I am already playing brown noise and wearing a headphone, but sounds like footsteps and hammering are still getting through. What right does the person above have to cause me disturbance when I've done nothing to her? For now, I will wait for a few days and see what the person above will do. If she is kind and considerate enough to wear slippers, I won't retaliate. But if the footsteps continue, then I guess I have no other option but to retaliate until I move out. And if she complains, I will cite that this is a shared apartment. Please tell me what you would recommend me do. I am still a bit shocked and probably thinking more emotionally than rationally now. If you think I have the right to retaliate, how would I go about that? Just bang on the ceiling with a broomstick? It would be obvious for her by this point that I am doing this out of retaliation, and I wouldn't be surprised that the landlord would come over in under half a minute to tell me to stop. But I am mentally almost done and ready to go this route, just to give her a piece of her own medicine. Please advise on how I should proceed from now on. So, my husband and I have lived here for a few years now. When we first moved in, the wife in the house across the street approached me, and we struck up a casual friendship, occasionally went on walks or got coffee together. Sometimes she would bring her four to five year old daughter, which was fine, I love kids, except it became obvious quickly she and her husband are the type that do not set boundaries for their children. Her daughter would loudly interrupt or talk over one or both of us, which, which is totally fine. Kids do that, but she never, and I mean never, effectively stopped her. She would give it a half-hearted, <laughs> no, no, we don't do that, after the kid had finished what they were doing or saying, and it was clear that the child didn't listen or understand, and mom didn't care. She would also get mad that the waiter served her kids' food too hot and would occasionally return either her own food or her kids' food for some small reason or another, which is blasphemy to me as a former waiter. Again, it is not the kid I have an issue with. It's her mother's lack of guidance and clear spoiling of this child. I love kids, and I've been out with other friends and their kids and have had a blast. This was not like that. It got to the point where I didn't want to go out with her because it felt like a glorified babysitting date instead of a fun outing for all three of us. Additionally, this kid has a habit of bothering my husband, who we'll call John for an amenity, every single time. He exits the house for any reason. At first, he thought it was cute, but then it got to be too much. Whether he is getting the mail, cutting the grass, getting a package off our porch, it's like she's waiting for him and runs out and yells, John, 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 over and over and over again. Again, not the kid's fault. They do this. But her parents never say, hey, it's rude to yell across the street. John is busy, etc. Sometimes her parents would just be standing there smiling at her doing it, like, Hello, people. We don't think your kid is cute. Our family members with kids have all said they never let their children be that bothersome to an adult if they could help it. My husband and I also tried going out with her and her husband at least once or twice and just didn't vibe with them. My husband got bad, creepy, angry vibes from her husband. I eventually just stopped answering their requests to hang out, which sucks, I know but I truly could not do it anymore, and my husband was completely uninterested in further double dates, and I couldn't handle turning her asks for those down. Eventually, after several months, she took the hint. Now, she and her weird husband just stare at us every single time we get home from anywhere. I try to politely wave and say hi and get crickets. Their annoying kid still screams my husband's name across the street, and she's got to be six or seven now. I used to feel guilty that we shrugged them off, but 
Now I'm just thoroughly annoyed and curious if anyone has mental strategies to steal themselves from quietly hostile neighbors. I just wanted a nice, well-boundaried neighborly connection. And now they've made it totally weird. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true neighbor from hell stories. Before I go on any further, I would like to give a very special shout out to the elite members of Back to Ashes. Nat Davey, Stephanie McLaren, Tammy Slayton, Mrs. Innerscare, Christy Elias, Sugar Spite, Tina Mead, Cindy, Amy Klimko, Anita B., Dova Khaleesi, Ida Smith, Luz Crispin, Samantha Place, Patty's Niece, Denise S., Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, and Cindy Cleveland. Thank you all so much for your continued support. For without you, there wouldn't be a me or there wouldn't be a Back to Ashes channel. Thank you. If you are asleep, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.